you want to ask how about any uh, prayer requests we have uh sister lily um had just texted my wife and i um she's still out of town but that i guess uh her dad her, her, her dad's name is rogelio ortiz um he's been in the hospital with uh covid19 he's been very sick um they said he wasn't going to make it through the night on tuesday night and uh but god has kept him has been answering prayers uh he's still in the hospital and they're awaiting a further um a further update so she said she asked if, if the church can keep her dad rogelio ortiz in prayer um also for brother carlos esparza i know we, uh, we had word today that he he's he's sick uh, and so um we're gonna keep him in prayer um also for um for oscar carvajal uh his mom oscar is uh Christina Singh, that's Norma's sister's uh, boyfriend, uh, her boyfriend's dad, uh, actually her boyfriend's um, mom, uh, tested positive for COVID-19 as well. And uh, we'll just pray that God will keep uh, his hand upon her and him as well and their entire family because they stayed together. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll believe for that as well. And um, anyone else, any, you know, and just, uh, I have a special need as well. So keep me in prayer. Um, it's, it's been the last, uh, it's been a, a rough few, uh, a couple weeks. Um, so in Jesus name, Any, anyone else? Yeah, I have a prayer request. Um, last Saturday, I went in to do um, an MRI to go into tube, but I freaked out. I, so I like had like an anxiety, really bad anxiety, panic attack, mm -hmm. but not till hopefully by next week, I should see to make another appointment. So for me to be strong and to go through it and to pray for all my four boys. Amen. Amen. We got that. Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Fabian. Hey, Brother Zagiri. How you doing? How you doing? Real good. good. I just wanted to uh, ask prayers for a, a partner of mine, his wife and his kids. This morning we got word that uh, he had committed suicide. And uh, a lot of people at work took it real hard. Um, you know, it's it's difficult when you're, you know, he's one of your instructors and uh, you had just talked to him the day before and, uh, you know, whatever he was going through battling, you know, I believe this topic is gonna, you know, fit just right, but uh, it, it's the Crane family. And uh, his wife is taking it really, really hard. There's a lot of family over there right now for support, but she's just, she's just overwhelmed and taking it really hard. I know a lot of people at work took it real hard because it was just totally unexpected. It's one of those cases where you think, where you, everybody was saying, you know, you just, nobody's seen it coming. So just pray for the, the Crane family and uh, his wife. His wife, his name's Shelly. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right, brother. Anyone else? Brother Fabian, I have a special unspoken need request also. Okay. Thank so you. Amen. You know, I don't know if um, <clears throat> Sister Christina's on, but um, her brother uh, Shay uh, was in was in a morning service on Sunday, and uh, he 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 prayed really well. So uh, we'll pray that God will continue to move in his life and continue to touch him. Brother Shay. Oh, I have a I have a prayer request for the Fabian. Yes. Oh, ahead, if you guys can keep my friend, uh, my friend that's been coming on Sunday mornings, uh, Aaron and her family, and prayer that God's doing a work in their, their lives as well. Sis, what's your name again? Her name is Erin. Her mom came Sunday too. She was playing real good. That's right. Molly? Yeah, Molly. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's right. She's doing... Yeah. All right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and lift up these uh, prayer requests and prayer. Let's just kind of lift our voices and, and, and believe in, in faith that God's going to continue to move 
uh, right now. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, God. God, you are still on the throne, God. You're still a miracle working, God. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. God, for the power in the name of Jesus. God, we lift up these, these uh, needs and, and, and prayers tonight, God. For Shay, God, you continue to move in his life. God, for Sister Lily's dad, Rogelio, God, you see uh, uh, his need, God. You, you see that he needs healing at this moment in the hospital bed. God, you reach down and you touch him, God. God, for Oscar Carvajal and his entire family. God, for our brother, Brother Carlos Esparza, God, you see his need, God. God, by, you said by your stripes we are healed. God, we're believing for a miracle. We're believing for a healing. Yes, God. Uh, God, for Sister Carmen, God, you continue to give her strength and, and healing and for her boys. God, and for the Crane family and for Shelly, God, you see what they're going through at this time, God. God, you give them strength. You reveal yourself to them, God. You, you show yes. them compassion and love. Uh, God, for Sister Roslyn, for Aaron and Molly, God, you continue to move in their life, God. Uh, and and um, also for Brother Brent and Sister Serena, God, for a special need in their life. God, we, we love you. We praise you, God. And for this Bible class tonight, God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here together as, as one body. Uh, God, to learn about you. Uh, God, you, you touch our minds, touch our hearts, God. God, you continue to reveal yourself to us. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all, all the honor. We love you, Lord. Amen. 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 All righty. So, so um, tonight we're going to lead off uh, our topic. We're going to talk a little bit about a, a couple different things. We're going to talk about uh, the double-minded man. Um, single-mindedness and uh, kind of how the words um, or, or the topic of uh, singularity pops up in the Bible. Um, singular meaning me, I, you. Uh, it's a big focus in, in, in the word of God. Um, so is group, um, but groups are ultimately made up of you and I, me and you. And so before we can help group uh, others, um, we have to begin with I, me, and self. And, and once we've helped ourselves and continue to help ourselves every day, and we've developed that single-mindedness because we are, we are one with God, we are God-centered, <coughs> not self-centered, um, we're able to more effectively help others through the word of God, through our testimony, um, through the way we are living, um, uh, through our faithfulness and, and through our walk with God. It... <laughs> and, and when we give them those answers and we say, hey, God is the way, and they don't always want to, to, to hear that, but they know uh, who to turn to and who to go to uh, only because we know who to go to, who to turn to. And, and it's not like we have um, all the answers, but we know God who has all the answers. Amen. Hang on just a second. <clears throat> Hang on just a second. Okay. Let me see. Let's get the mute in here real quick. I know we get getting some feedback. So, so we're going to go ahead and start. And if you guys have anything to say, this is be a good topic for, for a lot of us to kind of get into today. And we're not going to get too deep into it, but we, we do have some verses of scripture to share and just some thoughts uh, about this. And uh, um, so let's go ahead and get started. So James, <clears throat> let's turn to the book of James 1 and 8. <clears throat> so very, very short scripture. <clears throat> we've, we've heard it preached many times. We've, we've heard it brought up many times, and we're pretty familiar with this verse of scripture. And I think it's very fitting in the world we're living in. Um, and actually, I feel really strongly right now that, that we're, we're, we're in the will of God. Um, because you look at kind of what, what the world we're living in, um, the double-mindedness of, of man and, and kind of how that started off uh, with Adam and Eve. We'll kind of dive into that just, just a little bit. But uh, James 1 and 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so uh, we, we look at that verse just really quickly. We'll just dissect just a little bit. 
um, so double-mindedness in the Greek means di psychosis. It's, it's a one word. Um, but if you just look at that word, uh, the, the last part of it, psychos, uh, you, you might think of the word psyche, uh, usually refers to the mind, right? The psyche, the psychos of a person, psychology. Uh, you, you start getting into study of, of the mind and, and di, di, uh, means two. So two mind or two minded, double minded. Although the word dipsychos, when broken up, means double-minded, uh, a more accurate definition may si si uh, signal that a person is double-spirited or dual-spirited. Uh, not, not the type of person we want to be at all. And, and, um, but we, we go to a place, we go to the doctor, we go to the great physician to, to get rid of that double-mindedness. Um, but it, it also points not just to the double-minded double -minded person because we know, uh, hang on a sec, we know that that's not where we, where we want to be, but that double-mindedness leads to the instability in someone's life. That's the biggest thing you can take away from this is their, um, the things that they'll be producing, the, the way they're living is instability. And we might not ever see it on the outside because someone can hide it really well we will definitely see, uh, they will definitely see it on the inside. And, and we know the one person who can see the inside um, and the condition of our heart, and that is God. So we can never hide our true self, our heart from God. We can, we can mask and hide our true self, maybe from people, but we cannot hide from God ever. <clears throat> we look at the world in its current state right now. We see people who are non-committal you know do i go right do i go left well which way are you going well maybe i'll go that way you know uh no one can think or feel for themselves they're they're pulled every which way they're double-minded double-minded people um i feel like i'm on sunday now double-minded people are not people of god people of god are are single-minded uh, uh single-minded single god uh, amen uh, is there a God? Is there not a God? Those are some of the questions they're asking. Are you friend or foe? You know, are you brother? Are you sister? Wh 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 who are you? You know, everyone's confused. There's double-minded, double-minded spirit, double-mindedness all, all over. As we find God and we become new creatures, all of these questions are answered. All these questions we used to ask before, is there a God? Do I go left? Do I go right? Friend or foe? These are all answered you know, in, in an instant. We know we were revealed. We know truth. Hang on just a second. Um, can you guys give me a, a thumbs up? Can you guys hear me okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure my, on my computer it says internet connection unstable. So I just want to make sure if you guys can't hear me, uh, just chime in, please. Thank you guys. I see the thumbs up. So, you know, all those questions are answered. So we were able to discern friend from foe which road and direction to take because God, because God will tell us. Revelation of oneness, revelation of our purpose in life. We find ourselves in a better position to fend off this double-minded spirit. You know, even people of God will try to fend, uh, fend this stuff off sometimes, you know, where, where doubt will kind of set in and the devil will continue to lie to us and, and we got to fight that double-mindedness. And, you know, there's a, there's a scripture that talks about, um, 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 you can't, a, a man cannot serve God and the world, right? That, that's a double spirited person. Uh, you cannot live in that, that, uh, type of life that is, um, an, an unstable life. Um, uh, they're living in instability as a people of God. The last thing we ever want to be is double minded. Uh, we'll, we'll never know truth and revelation if we're always kind of on the fence, you know, and, and, and prayer, prayer helps, right? We never want to be dual spirited. Rather, we want to be single spirited, uh, single minded, uh, uh, single purposed about the father's business, single. We're going to talk about this word a little bit, just single, serving only one master, believing in a singular God, believing in the one true redemptive process, single one, 
believing in the only one way to be saved, and that's adherence to Acts 2.38, right? And then continuing in the apostles' doctrine, not doctrines. There are no multiple doctrines. There's only one doctrine. So there we go, sing single singularity. When we walk with God and uh, when we read through the Bible, we'll notice this singularity um, come up. This, this, uh, a lot of, it, like I said, me and I, and, and there's a we, there's group, but this is a pattern. You know, we are in this together. But what, what makes together? Uh, together means you're bringing pieces together. What are pieces? We are all pieces. We are all, there are many members. When when thou, when you, thou, Peter, are converted, strengthen thy brethren. So, Peter, it starts with you, singular. You can't help others or strengthen others until you've taken care of the singular man first, Peter. This is what he told him. Again, he says, behold, Satan has desired to have you, you singular, single. You, you have to take care of the, the, the self first. You know, I want to help us. Uh, I want to help people as much as the next person, but I can't get to the point where we're so caught up in the works and doing things that I can't remember the last time I, I got down on, the, on my knees and prayed and, you know, for my own self, you know, we become so task oriented that we forget and neglect me, I, you know, this isn't selfishness because you, you, you are the temple of God. So we are, we are required to take care of our inner and outer uh, self, you know, because it's collective, it's, it's one whole piece. We are not inner and outer, we are a collective piece. You know, uh, and, and this is making sure that our close walk with God remains close. You know, I, I think to myself, as an example, you know, how would my marriage look like if all I ever did was just go out and I'm always just helping others, helping others, and I, and I don't acknowledge my wife, you know, uh, we probably would be too close or continue, you know, we, we'd grow distant. You know, same thing with, with uh, uh, our relationship with God. If I neglected uh, praying, um, if I neglected my relationship with God for the sake of works, you know, uh, that relationship with God um, uh, won't be as strong. And it's not to say that we're not going to do works. We are going to do, work, do works, but through God first and primary. The Bible also says, repent and be baptized every one of you. Again, it's singular. It's our self. <clears throat> Acts 1 and 8, paraphrasing, it says, And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. <clears throat> I find this is interesting. We're going to read through this just a bit. So if you guys want to jump to Acts 2, 1 through 3, really quick. And this is kind of going away from double mind in this, but we'll get right back to it. But we're kind of talking about the singular nature that... that uh, that's very important as well. Single-spirited, uh, single-mindedness. It doesn't mean selfishness. It means uh, we are with God and in God. So <clears throat> Acts 2, we're going to read 1 through 3. Very familiar. We all know these, these verses of Scripture. So it says, you know, even in the upper room, we think about this really quick. Even the upper room, they were all, so all, all as a group, but all as singular individuals with one mind and one accord, single, singular. And the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them. So we have cloven tongues. What are cloven tongues as of fire? So cloven, you know, meaning uh, divided, divided tongues of fire, right? And it sat upon each of them. This speaks of the intimate nature of the Holy Ghost. This speaks of the intimate nature of our relationship with God the singular, the single-mindedness uh, relationship that we need to have with God, uh, taking care of self, 
uh, so that we can help others because we that is a requirement as well so it's just never me and my god by ourselves because this is important right we, our relationship our vertical but then we help others because the, it's a part of the great commission go into to all the world i mean the, this is a requirement we need to help others but it is it is first singular even though they were gathered together in one one mind and one accord all together they were still singular single individuals and the the fire the holy ghost fell on each of them individually so that's the intimate nature of the holy ghost so it, it, the holy ghost fell in a very personal and singular way so that to, to single-minded individuals uh, that were together gathered together in that room so so they were still um each person in order for them to receive still on their own single singly had to to get a hold of god you know on their own and and, and it and it it even uh, um, created more of a force because they, they, they were all together in one place and one mind, one accord. Um, um, so it was even more powerful because it was grouped, but it's still the groups made of, a, of, of individuals. And they didn't, they, they didn't receive because the next, uh, because the person next to them received, you know, they received because they individually made up in their mind that they wanted to get a hold of God for themselves. Uh, they were working out their own salvation, so to speak, as we see in the, and what the Bible says, you know, we even see this in the services <clears throat> today <clears throat> when uh, um, the preacher's preaching, or pastor, why don't you step out into the aisle by faith, come down to the altar and receive, believe, repent, ask God, seek God, thank God, praise God, worship God, you, you, I, me, you know, <clears throat> and then we do, we do receive because we, myself, I have taken action and control of the narrative, right? So what narrative are we talking about? So I've come seeking God is what I say when I go to the altar. I, me, I control the narrative. You know, even God is, even though God is the gifter and allows me to have a narrative, right? I still control because there's that volition, there's free will that I want to do this for myself. So I've come seeking God. I'm going down to the altar. I'm not leaving here until I've touched the hem of his garment. Right. And we've seen that in scripture as well. You know, that woman, she controlled the narrative. Right. Imagine, imagine if she hadn't come down, you know, imagine if she hadn't done that. What would her story have been or looked like from that point forward? You know, a whole different narrative would have taken place in her life. You know, imagine what our narrative, imagine what our life would have looked like had we not taken action, taken control. Because that, that's what it, I mean. God's always ready. You know, we're, we're the ones that we need to decide if we're ready. If we're ready to get rid of that double-mindedness so that only the Holy Ghost, only God can, get, can, can give us stability. We're going to talk a little bit about that. In Jesus' name. You know, I was thinking the other day, <clears throat> Brother Rao and I were, were, were talking just briefly about the time when I, when I, I, I lived and breathed truth. One time, I do now, Amen. At one point when I was younger, lived and breathed this truth, this beautiful truth. However, it was not long um, after I had left the church and had backslidden, you know, when you become out of touch with reality. Reality, what is reality? Reality is also known as truth. Truth is reality. Reality is truth. But word of God it is truth. It is reality. Um, and when you become out of touch with reality, and, and and you've gone you've removed yourself so far away from truth and reality and, and god you become a double-minded person you know and that that was me the truth that i once held dear became so distorted in my mind in my spirit right because double double spirited uh it is no longer truth you know to me it's still truth in reality but to the person it's, they don't know what reality is. It becomes so distorted. Now they're double-minded, you know, instead of single-minded. How I was when I was in church the first time. I was single-minded about the father's business, you know. Um, so now there's a new reality that's distorted in the life of a backslider or someone who doesn't have God. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. This replaces actuality. This replaces truth. Amen. One can look no further than Adam and Eve. 
<clears throat> we always go back to Adam and Eve. I think this, this kind of <clears throat> shows a good point. What was their reality? They walk with God in the cool of the day, such as a single-minded person does. All right, we're walking with God. We have a walk with God. We are a new creature in God. We are in Christ. We are single-minded. We're about the Father's business. They knew perfection. Uh, we're not perfect yet. We're striving for perfection, and we will achieve it someday. Amen. We stay single-minded, stay God-minded. They possessed dominion, <clears throat> and as single-minded individuals, single-mindedness you know you have no room for double-mindedness because you know truth hang on just a second <clears throat> so this is what adam and eve oh, experienced yeah. okay so this is what they experienced into a a, a a proposed or supposed alternate reality was proposed to them you know and, and, and so they were single-minded and here comes the devil, here comes the serpent to propose that there's an alternate reality, which there is no other alternate reality. There's no other reality outside of a relationship with God or outside of the will of God or outside the plan and purpose of God. None, zero. However, it was proposed to them. It was a lie, right? It was deceit from the devil. They were deceived into believing that there was more out there to be had than what God had to offer them. So their single-mindedness, they said, no, no, that's not the way, you know, there's an alternate. You have one way, no, there's an, a second way. There's your double-minded spirit, you know, being introduced into life. Uh, double-mindedness, you know, that, that there's no reality. There's another reality outside of God is what people believe that, that no, 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 I, 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 um, this is my life. I, I, I can do whatever I want. Well, that's true. But, but for, for salvation and God, for, for us to find true life, um, there is no reality outside of that and outside of God. <clears throat> One of the greatest lies that men since the fall of man continue to fall for is that there's a reality outside of God. <clears throat> and we know there's nothing for us out there. We have families within the framework of God, right? We find we find spouses. Um, we marry within the will and framework of God. Our physical finite jobs are provided and blessed by God. We give, we give praise reports because God is providing. We, we are single-minded and we say, God, if it's your will, I will have this job. God, my family is going to be serving God with me. God, if it's your will, I'm going to find that right man or woman in the church. Uh, um, that's that single-mindedness. You know, the double-minded person will look outside the will of God and force their hand, right? And we've seen it before, and, and we see that with Eve, right? <clears throat> um, there's something else to be had, and, and that's just not true. You know, when they took partook of the fruit, they lost all single-mindedness. You know, when we begin to dive into sin or let it creep into our hearts and lives and overtake us, our priorities are no longer straight, all right, we become double-minded and unstable in all our ways, as James 1 and 8 told us. There's only stability in God, period. There's no stability outside of God. God is stability. You know, when we begin to detach from truth and reality, as I did when I backslid, uh, we encounter instability, and your life becomes completely unstable. Uh, you might say chaotic um, there's no structure. There's chaos everywhere. Look at Adam and Eve. They who knew perfection. Oh, there, there's no waves in, 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 on, on, on their boat. They were on a boat with, with no waves, so to speak, right? But their world was rocked the moment they partook of the fruit. They became disconnected from God, separated, and their life and the life of every man from that point forward would begin in instability, Right? Being born into sin is instability. Uh, there's nothing stable about living in sin. What about walking in darkness? You know, I, I don't know about you, 
Uh, but walking in the dark to the restroom at night, I, I never feel sta stable. You know, one, it's probably late at night, and two, it's dark. You know, there's no stability in darkness. You know, there's no stability in sin. However, there is stability in God, and there's stability in the light that God brings to us. Amen. You, you think about someone who's physically lost in the woods, um, and you're on a hike, and you're in the middle of nowhere. You look around, and all you see is forest, you know, and, and you realize you've lost a trail. You don't know what north, south, east, or west is. You know, that's a cl classic sign of, of an unstable situation. So someone without God, um, someone who has yet to be reconciled, um, finds himself in this position in this situation, a situation I'd never want to find myself in ever again. Amen. But uh, 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 think about that. This is a, a physical example of someone being lost and not having direction. Um, but then you think about the spiritual, you know, someone who's spiritually lost uh, in need of direction, in need of being pointed in the right direction or the correct way. Jesus said, I am the way. He is the way. Um, he says, I'll point you in the right direction. I will lead you into the correct path, the straight and narrow that leads to life, right? What is life? Life is stability, single-mindedness. Uh, li life is, is, is salvation, reconciliation. Life gets us to heaven. It gives us newness of life. That old, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. What is new? Our life. We have new direction. We have single-mindedness, no more double-mindedness, no more confusion, no more thoughts of suicide and depression. Um, you know, we have stability in our life. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the path to salvation, the path to reconciliation, the path to single-mindedness and stability. And he says, I am the truth. You know, when it's some, something is true, then it's real. It's reality. It's the revelation through the Holy Ghost. Through the word of God, that is truth. It's reality. It's real. This is really going to happen. A real heaven, a real hell. You know, um, there, there, there's, it, it's all real. That's truth. And he says, I am the life that is found at the end of the straight and narrow way. I am the way out of, you know, uh, all confusion, all doubt. You know, and, and, and we're not exempt you know, as people of God, um, we're not exempt from the forces of the adversary that brings about this double-mindedness. You know, the serpent was there. The adversary was there at the beginning of man. And he's going to be there at the end of man as well, where there, God tarries and, and we're still, uh, you know, and, 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 and we, we pass away. God, the, the adversary will always be there trying to get us to think that there's another reality outside of God, uh, outside of the church, uh, outside of the body of Christ. And, and he'll begin to pull and propose certain things to us, certain lies, you know, that just aren't true. And so it's so important that we remain single-minded um, through the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost and we have a great prayer life and we're faithful to God. God is, will always be faithful to us. Uh, God will always give us strength, and it doesn't mean we, we won't ever have trials and tribulations, you know, but we, we go through those things, and we grow through those things, you know, and we can say, man, this thing's never going to end, because it feels that way, but we can also come out so much stronger, and I know I've gone through, the, through those things, and, and especially dur during this time, uh, through this COVID, you know, it's, it's like a roller coaster. It, it feels like we're on an unstable unstable boat sometimes you know like the waves are rocking around and you're like when is this gonna stop you know but god just as he did with uh, uh on that boat and they woke him up because the boat was moving around and he told the waters to calm god can calm the waters in our lives uh if we just ask and believe amen 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 god is good god is good I thank God for stability in my life. Would anyone like to share uh, how God has moved in, in their lives and given them stability? Even though you've shared your testimony many times, it's always great to hear it again and to share it again. Because sometimes when we share our testimony again, 
it makes us think like, man, no, God's been really good. And he gives us that extra boost sometimes to say, you know what? God's never done us nothing but good. You know, when I, you know, we hear about that song, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and you could sing that song every single day because it's so true. Any thoughts, any comments? I'd like to hear from someone. Silas Barner, I don't have it online. Why? Mm -hmm. How did you find Silas Barner? Oh, no. I'm sorry. That's all right. <clears throat> Anyone? Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll say um, something. Brother Rao. Um, so, like you were saying, when, when I was backslid, um, I remember sometimes uh, being so lost and in, in, in what I was doing that I didn't know what was up or down. I didn't know what day it was. And I remember thinking, God, I just want, I just, I just want to get up in the morning. I just want to do it right. I want to have a schedule, <laughs> you know, because I was just lost. Yeah. I, there was a point in my life it got really dark, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the one thing that I always have said, like, regardless even now, like, uh, regardless of what's going on, um, I'm glad I have a foundation in Jesus because, like, just going to the house of God on the scheduled days, just being able to go on those days when we were able to go, like, all you know, on our regular scheduled days, yeah, yeah, um, just helped me have stability, like that alone, right? Being able to go to the house of God and get fed and pray, you know, um, that was a big step for me because it gave me encouragement gave me hope and regardless of the finances regardless of the chaos in my family regardless of whatever problem I had um, that gave me the singleness of mind to know that okay God you're you're one in my life you know you're you're the you're one in my life and God help me to keep you there help me to you know so that so like I learned what I'm trying to say is I learned that like if you keep God if you're focused on God and you keep him first um, you know, you, you don't really look around. It's like when Peter was on the boat, when he, when he started looking at, at the Lord, he focused on that and everything seemed doable. But the minute he looked away, so like going to church and like I said, praying, reading the Bible gave me that foundation because when things are shaky, I have that. I'm not, I don't ever think like, oh, well, man, I'll go back. And I know for without a doubt in my mind, there's nothing out there. I know. Yeah. Right. So like Amen. that to me, that's, like I said, we have our shortcomings and we fail, you know, we, we, um, we fail on a daily basis, but there's no failure in God and God has structure. There's structure. I mean, even if that alone, like you don't even have, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, yeah. you may not have a job, you may not have the, you know, or a car, you may not have these things, but you have Jesus. So you have everything. Yeah. And when you're lost and you don't have and you're backslid or let's say you don't know Christ, you don't you don't have any hope. Like there's people out there they just they tell me like, oh man, just talking to you or you know, hey, that's that's a that's a breath of fresh air. That's that's hope right there because they don't know the Bible sometimes at all, you know. But anyways, I just think it's good because God is a stable God and it's us that fail, it's us that get sidetracked, but God never gets sidetracked. And if we could just like focus on him and get back on the right track and be in his will. And that's when we really get that understanding. And it'll let you know if you're off too. It, you'll say, man, you know what? I, I feel off. I know. Yeah. And then you start examining. And then you find, okay, this is where I need to be. And God helped me to stay on the straight and narrow path. But the, the road is always straight though. I mean, sometimes yeah. you tumble and you fall, but the road is always straight. So to me, that's, that's just, it's a good feeling to have God in my life. Because like I said, when you look to God, everything that starts to iron out as long as you stay on that path. Don't quit. I, I remember one time and I'll just, I'll finish right now. But I remember one time I, um, I felt like I was failing really bad, you know, but I felt like God was speaking to my heart and he said, to fail is to go backwards. Don't go backwards, repent and go forward. Yeah. And if God's big on repentance and if you just keep going forward, you'll be, you'll have that stability in your life with God and everything will start to iron out sooner or later, you know? Amen. Yeah. And you're right. We, we, and we have the, uh, we, we are gifted. We are, um, we have the ability to get back up. God has given us that ability to repent and, 
and be forgiven and get back up. And that's why that scripture that uh, Micah 7 and 8, uh, you know, uh, the, the brother Irzagiri loves, you know, I, I see it a little differently because, you know, um, um, it, it's like saying, why are you rejoicing, enemy? When I fall, I'm able to get back up. When you fell, you fell. You know, I, I, I have the capability, I have the ability through God to get back up every single time. But the adversary, once he fell, you know, what does the Bible say? And I, I, I beheld Satan fall, you know, and he fell and he's not able to get back. So it's almost like a jealousy, right? He's jealous of our, our relationship with God. Not only that, he's fallen, he can't get back up, but we have that ability to, through the grace of God, through the mercy of God, to get back up every single time. You know, and like you said, repent. You know, repent. Amen. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Yeah, I have something to say. I, Sister Erica, yeah. I look, I look back on my life years ago, and I could never imagine my, myself being in the, the place I am. In my life, financially, like you know, I'm not. I'm going to school and getting my career going and stuff, but I would never be at the position I am in without God. And even repairing my credit, like my mom tells me, man, your your credit six months ago was shot, and now it's already in the seven hundreds. And I'm like, I could never imagine having that good of a score without without God. And I mean, yeah. that's just like things like that. But it's just with, through with Him, everything is possible. Amen. Amen. You know, and yeah, and you, you mentioned God 10 times in your little testimony, and, and that's a single-minded person, you know, and single-mindedness brings stability, you know, uh, double-mindedness brings instability. So when we didn't have God and we weren't putting God first, there's our instability, there's our double-mindedness. We, we're a loose cannon, you know, we're, we're thinking about who knows what we're thinking, uh, you know, uh, suicide and just whatever. Whatever, whatever the case may be, but uh, that's a great example, you know, and that fits perfectly, you know, the single-minded person is stable. Amen. Anyone else like to share before we draw a couple names for uh Yeah, brother, I'll share, I'll share real quick. Oh, okay. Here, yeah. I have um, something. Oh, go ahead, sis. Sister Rosalyn, go, go for it. Oh, go ahead, brother. <laughs> No, go ahead. Lady, ladies first. Ladies first. Oh. <laughs> um, it's a few things. Um, first of all, um, like I shared in the beginning, I've been praying for spiritual things and God's been blessing me financially. And now with the car and spiritual things too. And uh, he's been blessing my children too. And um, I was going to say that um, I'm a prayer answered. Um, even though I'm a backslider, I'm not, yeah. I'm ashamed to say that I am. But I'm a prayer answer. I always let my kids go when they were little, the two younger ones. And three of my daughters got the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name when they were eight years old. All that truth tabernacle. And so um, I was going to say on um, March or February, I spoke with Elder Parks. And he said that when God blesses you in any way, spiritual, financial, physical, a little bit of self-confidence goes up inside yourself. And that's so true. Um, I've been praying for boldness and authority that comes with the Holy Ghost. And um, the prayers that I've been asking for spiritual have boosted my confidence. And um, also uh, recently a sister from another church gave me a clipping one leaf from her plant. And um, I knew plants and trees were strong, but I didn't know this, what I'm about to tell you. My, it, it grew two more leaves, a total of three, and I had it like low enough to where my granddaughter could get a hold of it, not thinking that she would. And I caught her and she had um, not the middle leaf, but the two on the side. She pierced her fingernails in the leaf. And I was so sad and upset. I thought it was going to die because it eventually dried out and the two leaves that she pierced with her fingernails died, leaving the only one. Well, now I barely noticed the other day it's grown five and wow. the leaves are like three inches long and they're big. And I was explaining to my daughter what happened. And my son-in-law who used to work in the fields for years, his, his father does too, was explaining to me that, that trees in the fields and plants are resilient. The, um, in fact, a tree that's not producing or as well, they'll even slice the tree. But if a tree or a plant is damaged or hurt, 
it'll grow back better, stronger, uh, bigger, and uh, more more um, fruitful. And I never knew that until he told me the other day. I knew they were strong. And it reminds me of that song, just like the tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. And so I thought that was beautiful. And I think that's how we are too, you know, precious metals, gold and silver are tried through the fire and um, to, to be pure and it gets rid of all the impurities and they're even stronger than Preach. before. And so I just thought I wanted to share that. Amen. Try not to amen, down. amen. That was good, sis. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> that was awesome. Anyone else? Brother Izagiri. Yeah, I don't know if I can follow that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, um, you know, everything you said, you know, like after, uh, you know, a, a lot of you are aware, like I said, a partner of mine uh, committed suicide this morning. And, you know, when I look at double mindedness, when it says a double minded person is unstable in all his ways, the only thing I can come up with is smiling on the outside, but screaming on the inside, you know, and uh, a few months ago, I went to this individual, the same one that committed suicide, and I began to compliment on compliment him on his heroism, because if you guys remember a few months ago, I was preaching about a young man that was on the bridge, getting ready to jump off the freeway, off the 198 in Visalia. Well, that was that same man that went and uh, called 911, turned back around and was able to help this teenager from committing suicide, you know, not realizing that he, you know, uh, this morning would be put in that same situation, but be successful, you know, and, uh, you know, just like you were saying earlier, you know, the Bible study, you know, you got to learn to help yourself before you can help others. You know, and, and uh, you know, we live in a we live in a dog eat dog world today, you know, and the devil is going to do everything he can. Like the Bible says that he's a roaring lion walking to and fro seeking whom he may devour. You know, and you look at that word whom it's singular, you know, whom he may Amen. devour. Who, Amen. You know, and the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Whose mind? Your mind. You know, and. uh, uh you know, um, you know, I, you know, I was talking to my brother-in-law today and, and driving home and, you know, I, uh, I'm so thankful that I'm surrounded by good people, you know, that can help me stay, uh, focused and committed and, uh, on the right track, you know, and I'm so thankful for, um, you know, the church that I can call my brothers and, you know, my sisters, because I was telling my brother-in-law, you know, I'm so thankful that I'm surrounded by good people, that I got good support that I got, you know, and I'm not saying that he didn't have that, but he didn't have, he didn't have, like you were saying, the reality. He didn't have the truth. He was, you know, being pulled in many different directions, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm so thankful, you know, that, that, uh, uh, I'm in my right mind today, you know, that, uh, part of me can be single-minded, but at the same time, not be selfish. Make sense. Yeah, amen. You know, I'm, I'm single. I'm, I'm, I'm in singleness in my walk with God where I understand it's a, it's a, it's a singleness of salvation. I have to work out my salvation on my own, you know, but, uh, at the same time, um, I am also, uh, um, uh, not selfish, but, uh, I still have, um, I still, how can I say it? Uh, it's not about me also, you know, about my, you know, it's about my family and the church and, you know, my walk with God. And so, in, in one part of my salvation, I'm selfish because it's singleness. I, I have to work this out for myself. But at the same time, you know, like you were saying in the Bible study, there's that singleness, but then there's that, that part where it, it involves others as well, you know. And, uh, um, you, know, uh, you know, I look back at a... Uh, 
at just it's you know I look I look at my partner you know and I'm thinking you know uh I I I on my way home I I couldn't help but but you know get choked up and I I I cried you know because he's a good you know to me he was a good man you know and uh but at the same time he was selfish in in so many ways and I'm not going to have all the answers to uh a lot of the questions you know but the the answer that I do know today is that you know I I couldn't do it without God especially with where I work you know and I couldn't do it without the church I couldn't do it without you know uh a good pastor good saints you know good friends you know and so I, I on my way home I got a, a lot of time to ponder and to think you know about uh about when the bible study you were talking about double-minded person unstable in all his ways i'm thinking you know it was so fit it, it was it was actually for me today you know and and uh and so uh we're praying for you brother we're praying for you but i just want to let the church know that i'm so thankful for the church today and, and uh Yeah, I thank God for a, a good, a good church, a good family, and that I could that today I have a peace of mind. You know that that I'm living for God, and and uh, you know it's uh, I've gotten a lot of phone calls, and you know he was just a good dude, and uh, I think you know how can somebody be so selfish? But at the same time, you know, like I said, you never have all the answers to the questions. You know, but like I said, I'm thankful for the the answer today, you know, which is uh, Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful that I can be renewed of the mind and have the mind of God and to be able to think on these things. And so uh, thank you for the Bible study. It was it was on point, brother. And and all those that are listening today, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that, you know, I have a good support in the church. Amen. And, and, uh, but anyways, great job, brother. Appreciate it. And, uh, look forward to seeing the church on Sunday. Amen. 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 We love you too, brother. We're, we're praying for you, praying for you and we're praying for, um, uh, all your coworkers and praying for Shelly and, and their entire family. Um, in Jesus name. Um, I think it'd be just fitting to to end Bible class here. And why don't we just. Crying on the inside and we never know who's going through pain, what someone's going through. This is why we're, it's so important that we. Brother, I, I, don't, I can't hear you, brother. Here. Um, brother Rao, you have something to say? No, I was going to say I couldn't hear you. I don't know if it was my computer or not. I couldn't oh, hear all that. It, yeah, it, it was, uh, I said, unstable connection. But we're just going to go ahead and end this in prayer. And then uh, we'll just pray for, uh, continue to pray for, for, for Shelly and their family, for all the prayer requests. And then uh, not only that, pray for our, for, for our church and, and our own brothers and sisters. So. God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here uh, once again for a Thursday Bible class. God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for the power of the Holy Ghost that moved tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for what, you're, what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do, God. God, you see and meet every need that was here tonight. God, you continue to move in, in the life and family of Shelly. God, you, you see the hurt and pain that they're going through today. God, God you, you uh, let your light shine, God, in their life. God, God, you bring them to truth and revelation. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, God, you continue to move in, in the lives of my brothers and sisters at church, God. We thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love. We thank you, Lord, for strength and power and authority, God, that we have through the Holy Ghost. And we thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus, God, and, and, and 